So for the last decade, we've been interested in, in how experience and sleep shapes the developing brain. And an old mystery has been why do babies spend so much time in what we call dreaming sleep or rapid eye movement sleep. So what we decided to do is to look in an animal model of developmental brain plasticity, what happens if animals don't have this REM or dreaming sleep. And what we find is that the ability of experience to shape these connections uh, does not leave a permanent mark on the brain without REM sleep. That REM sleep is needed in order for this trace to crystallize or consolidate. And this means that during early life in particular, REM sleep may be very important for how the brain establishes its connections. So we were able to manipulate vision during early life for very short periods of time and then look to see how that changed the connections in that part of the brain. And what we found is that while experience can cause a small change in these circuits, you really need to have sleep for these circuits to really remodel themselves. And you really need REM sleep in order for this remodeling to stick, to crystallize. So that's pretty much simply how we did these experiments. And we can measure these changes in a couple of ways. So we measure brain activity using an imaging technique. We also measure the single cell activity of individual neurons in, um, in freely behaving animals. And then in other cases, we're able to measure changes in proteins that might be important for how neurons change their connections. And by combining all these various measurements, we're able to show that you really need REM sleep for this process to occur. And it seems to be because during REM sleep, there's an activation of certain enzymes in the neurons that enable them to change their, connect their connections, combined with what appears to be a reactivation of the patterns of firing that were present during wakefulness. So in a certain sense, it's, it's as if the neurons were dreaming about their visual experience in REM sleep. At the same time, they were changing these enzymes in ways that made those dreams change those connections. Well, on the one hand, it addresses a really age-old mystery in the field, which again is, we know that infant animals spend a lot of time in sleep, and of that time, most of it's in REM sleep, yet there's really no hard evidence as to why this should be, or what's actually going on. So the fact that we have provided some insights into what's really going on in the brain during the state is a breakthrough, in my opinion. It's a really an advance in understanding on, on a protein level and also an activity level why REM sleep is so important. Um, it also raises some interesting questions. It's possible that REM sleep is doing the same thing in the adult brain as it does in infant brains, but maybe not. Maybe there are other things that happen with this state of sleep as we get older. So that's an important future direction, and I think that any theory of sleep function, and we don't really understand why we sleep yet, there are many theories about it, but any theory of sleep function has now have to, has to grapple with these findings that, okay, now we found something very specific about this state, so any theories that we have on the table now have to be refined in a lot of this information. So I think those are, and I think another thing that's really important is uh, there's some appreciation that children are not often getting as much sleep as they need, and that changing the amount of sleep can have impact on how they do in school, for example. And so, and the other thing is that children are increasingly being treated with medications that alter sleep, whether it be uh, stimulants for ADD or things like that, or even hypnotic agents to help them sleep, or other compounds that have not been really tested in terms of what they're doing. And a lot of these drugs actually reduce REM sleep. So our findings have real implications, I think, for how we treat our children with medications. Well, we've just begun to understand the mechanisms that are involved. So we've only identified a few of the proteins and enzymes that are changing. We don't know yet what the downstream consequences of those events are. We don't know if these findings apply to other kinds of plastic changes in the developing or adult brain. So, there's, uh, so there's, there's a lot of directions to go with this right now. Many, many unanswered questions.